Well, good morning. This is Pastor Marvin Osborne of First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. Happy New Year. As I tape this, this is, I'm taping on the first day of November. I'm a little OCD. I like to have things uh, done ahead of time. In case I get sick, have to do some funerals, have to do things that a uh, pastor has to do. You never know what life's going to bring, but I committed to putting out videos each day and uh, certainly sermons each week. And, and this is a sermon that I'm planning on preaching this first weekend of the new year. And I'm excited about it. I like this message. I prepared it some time ago. And, uh, and so the, sometimes I get more excited about the messages than maybe our people do. But this is one of those. And it's uh, entitled, The End is Better. The End is Better. The end of 2023 was better than the beginning. And uh, we'll talk more about that. We're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 8 through 10. And I love the book of Ecclesiastes, don't you? It says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the parent, a patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former things were better than these? For thou, ha thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. Ecclesiastes 7, 8 through 10. You know, 12 months ago, we entered into 2023 with trepidation, right? We had this president we weren't sure about, and uh, we wondered what 2023 would bring. And I remember preaching that we should determine to make 2023 a year without worry and anxiety. And I hope that worked well for you. It, it was a struggle for me. And I uh, continue to be concerned about where this nation is going, where uh, the concern over my family, my children, my grandchildren, the concern over our finances like everybody else. And, and so uh, that, that, has, that weighed on me all year long of trying to give everything over to the Lord. And I think I'm better than I was a year ago at this time, but we enter in this new season, don't we? We have a, another year ahead of us. And, uh, uh, you know, whatever 2023 brought you, you know, it brought you here. This is a brand new year. Most of the things we worry about never come to pass, do they? We worry about that argument. We worry about that that conversation or, or what if this happened or whatever that happened or whatever else. And most of the things we worry about uh, don't come true. And, uh, but in truth, as we look back on 2023, we, we know that we have gone through in our country, the rabbit hole of incompetence and depravity and instability. This country has, has never known before. You know, we left 2023 with a better insight into what maybe this year is going to bring, right? Uh, we enter 2023-24 with trepidation, knowing how far we've gone down and wonder how far we'll continue to go down before the rapture of the church. You know, our country is in a free fall of depravity, is it not? Um, when we talk about our country, we're also talking about the people we love and we care for, and, and, and we know their moral stances have, have changed, have they not? Our country has gone through a free fall of violence. Uh, this idea of, of, of vi the violent nature. You, you fear even going to the grocery store at certain times at night lest some, uh, some guy out there will uh, think you disrespected him in some way or they ha you have something that they want or, or you just happen to be there and they'll attack you. We're, uh, we're in a free fall uh, financially, of course, we're just printing money uh, willy-nilly and and uh, with no uh, n no means to back that money up. And certainly, we're in a free fall uh, in in political incompetence, are we not? Do we do we have do we trust in our government? Oh God, give us a man like Ronald Reagan again. We need somebody that can see 
the forest for the trees. We we need somebody who can uh, God will use to bring us out of this moral and financial and, uh, and political abyss that we're in. But yet, in all that we went through in 2023, we can we can look back and say that God brought us through it. Right? He brought you through it. He fed you. He protected you. He housed you. He clothed you. He healed you. He indwelt you. He secured you. He saved you. Oh, praise his holy name. We went into 2023 wondering how we would make it. And you know what? We did through God's grace. He is a good God. Solomon says the end is better than the beginning. We can look back and see God's provision, but in 2023, at the beginning, we wondered how all that was going to work out. The end is better than the beginning, and that's true in most things, isn't it? The end of a workout is better than the beginning, right? That idea of having to go in and exert a certain amount of, of exercise and energy into uh, getting on that treadmill and moving weights and so forth. That Boy, the end of that is better. You feel better at the end than you do at the beginning. The the uh, the end of a dentist appointment is better than the beginning. Just the thought of having to go in there and keep your mouth open while he drills in your teeth, uh, it's so much better at the end than it is at the beginning. You know, the end of a sermon is better than the beginning, I imagine. You're wondering how long this this pastor is going to speak. You wonder how what he's going to say and, and everything else. You know, the end of an interview... You're going in for a new job is always better than uh, than the beginning of it. And you know what? For the believer, the end of our life is better than the beginning, isn't it? The idea of going home and being with the Lord is better than the beginning. Paul said it this way. He says in Philippians 1.21, he says, For me to live as Christ and to die as gain. He said it's so much better to be with Jesus than to be right here, right now. You know, 2023 is, is gone, but you are stronger and you are wiser and hopefully you are closer in your relationship with Jesus than at the beginning of 2023. The trials of our past has prepared us for our future. What we went through in 2023 uh, has prepared us for what is about to occur in 2024. As God saw you through yesterday, he'll see you through today and tomorrow. You can count on that. I like what James 1, 2 says. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse or various trials, knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience. The things that we go through uh, produces what's about to occur uh, that God wants to produce in our life. What we went through in 2023 has prepared us for the, for the coming year. And, and, and we have no idea what that will bring. God has, has used the past to prepare you for your tomorrow. You may not feel prepared to go into 2024, but James says God has already prepared you and continues to prepare you for what will come. Will 2024 be better than 2023? No. No. Unless Jesus intercedes, our political structure is not getting any better. Hollywood and media and, and music and education, racial division, crime, violence, etc. are not going to get any better without Jesus. Although you may not, uh, although 2024 may not be better you know what? You are better. You are better. Because you were consistent in your walk with Christ, because you stayed in the Word of God, because you stayed in church, because you stayed in prayer, you are better prepared for what lies ahead. 2024 is not going to be better, but you are better. God has already prepared you for what is about to occur. We worry about... Um, uh, inflation. We worry about our children. We worry about crime. We worry about the political system. We worry about this and we worry about that. Don't worry about it. God's already got it handled. He has already prepared you to tackle whatever he has for you in 2024. God has used the 
hardships of the past to prepare, prepare us for the hardships of this coming year. And I sure wish I could tell you in 2024 that this would be a year of blessing. This uh, would be a year of riches and health and healing and abundance and joy and laughter. Uh, that there are not going to be any deaths, there's not going to be any pain, there's not going to be any sickness, there's not going to be any unemployment, there's not going to be any trials, there's not going to be any persecution, no, no more troubles or anything like that. I wish I could tell you that, but you know that's a lie. Regardless of what other preachers are saying, that's simply not true. 2024, it's going to be similar to 2023, I think, but only on a uh, maybe a magnified uh, way of of of, of that going down that depra that rabbit hole that we've been going through uh, going through that that rabbit hole of depravity in every facet of life. We can count on our nation not getting better. We can count on the poor uh, political decisions to come out of White House, the White House and Congress and the Senate because there's spiritual wickedness in high places. We can count on these things because we're marching toward the rapture of the church. And God has chosen you to live at such a time as this. But uh, in all of that, we have the assurance that Jesus has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That we don't go through this valley of the shadow of death alone, but, but our, the Lord is our shepherd will be there. Amen? He is there in that valley of the shadow that we're going to go through this year. And yes, we're going to go through it. And we're going to go through it with Jesus and we're going to go through it together. We're going to go through it together. And I encourage you to be involved in your local church. And if you're around here, to be involved in this church. Because we're going to need the Lord. We're going to need each other in the coming year. And the great thing is that the Bible says that, that we can come boldly before the throne of God, letting him know what our problems and issues are. And uh, he's always got a, a, a willing ear, open ear for you and I. We go through, uh, we go through this new year better prepared because Jesus has already prepared us to go through it. Amen. What's the old saying? We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future, right? We know that Jesus already knows what is going to occur, not only in this nation, but in your life as well. I started thinking about this, and I started thinking about Joseph. And, you know, you think about Joseph, and he didn't know what his life would be when he was sold into slavery. And he didn't know what his life was going to come out, how his life was going to come out, when he was falsely accused and, and sent to prison. And Ju Joseph didn't know what was going to occur when he was taken from prison and put into as the prime minister of, of Egypt. And you know, the same is true for you and I. You may be struggling today, but you don't know what God is preparing uh, you for tomorrow. And we keep on in our faithfulness and trusting Christ and, and doing what God wants us to do because he already knows our future. Our past has prepared us for our today and our today is preparing us for our tomorrow. Each trial brings us to deeper faith and a deeper relationship and a deeper trust in Jesus Christ. And that allows us to let him navigate uh, and, and move us and make us exactly what he wants us to be. I know that's true uh, in my life, and I know it's true in your life as well. We see in Isaiah 40, verse 31, it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be weary. You know, God has a plan for you. We can trust him. Revelation 2.10 says, Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. 
Revelation 2.10. Certainly he's talking about those, those churches. There's set one of the seven churches there. And, uh, but I think it's an admonition. It's a, it's a warning and it's an encouragement for you and I that as we go through persecution, to, to remember that persecution's only momentarily, only momentary in comparison to all eternity of where, wherewith we will be with the Lord. That's why Paul could say in, in, in Romans 8.18, 8, he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He says, you and I can endure today because we know the reward tomorrow. We're not looking for your earthly reward. I dare say that most of us are not going to get any healthier. Most of us are not going to get any financially uh, more stable than what we are today. Certainly, we, we don't look through the government to get any better. Even when we, hi, uh, we, we put people in there that, that promise us uh, biblical values, we, we still look at that with some skepticism and, and, uh, and, and wonder if, if, you know, if they're just mouthing those words to get in the office. You know, uh, we look at our school, we look at media, we look at sports, we look at all these things, and, and nothing's getting better. And it's not supposed to be. Uh, the Bible declares that as in the days of Noah, uh, Noah, that's when the floods came, right? And as uh, similarly when in the days of Noah, uh, in, in the days before the rapture, he says it's going to be a similar experience. Uh, there's going to be a rise of violence, there's going to be a rise of this and a rise of pleasure and all this other stuff. That 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 idea of self-stimulation, that idea of, of of doing what I want to do without regard to the Word of God. And you go through all the prophecies of old. I believe 2024 could be the year that Jesus comes back. Wouldn't that be great? Come, Lord Jesus comes. But in the meantime, in the meantime, you and I have a job to do. It starts with you and I being faithful. Faithful in our walk with Jesus. Faithful in our Bible time with the Lord. Faithful in our church. Faithful in prayer. Faithful in reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let this be the year that you invite your children. Get them in the church. Your grandchildren in the church. Your neighbors, your work associates, whatever, whoever that God has laid on your heart to bring them to the place where they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? You and I have a job to do. God has prepared us for what is about to occur. We don't have to fear the future. We just fear the one. We honor the one. We reverence the one. We, we, we give all to the one who already has it all planned out. Amen? Well, let me ask you this. This first weekend of the new year, are you saved? Are you born again? Are you? Do you know that you're going to heaven when you die? Are you willing to repent of your sins? Do you believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God the Son, was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on the cross for your sins to pay your sin debt? If you're willing to repent and receive Christ as your Savior, why don't you bow your head right there and say, Dear Father, in Jesus' name, I confess my sin before you. I no longer want to live this way. Please forgive me and cleanse me and make me whole in your sight. I don't want to uh, die and go to hell. I receive Jesus Christ uh, as my Savior today. Now and forever, make me eternally yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen? Amen. Well, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne saying God loves you. And I love you as well, and I'll talk to you soon.